This is the grave of my mother, Eva Wishart. Last year we buried her here. I miss her every day. In the last months of her life, the cancer ate away at her. Late one night, close to the end, she became agitated. She had the same disease as her mother and sister. And as a doctor herself, she knew there was a risk. She might have passed it on to her children. And so I promised to investigate. This is my search to find out whether faulty genes cause my mother's death and whether there's anything I can do to avoid a similar fate. And with more and more people looking to find out about their genes, I want to know how we as a nation are dealing with the new possibilities of genetic medicine. States. Today the world is joining us to celebrate the completion of the first survey of the entire human genome. Without a doubt, this is the most important, most wondrous map ever produced by humankind. Eleven years ago, two of the most powerful men in the world triumphantly announced that for the first time, each of the 30,000 genes on the 23 pairs of chromosomes in every cell and every human body had been identified. Let us be in no doubt about what we are witnessing today. A revolution in medical science whose implications far surpass even the discovery of antibiotics. With this profound new knowledge, humankind is on the verge of gaining immense new power to heal. So are these promises becoming reality? Is the NHS exploiting these enormous leaps in science? And is the new knowledge helping us make life-saving decisions? I'm starting my search by trying to find out what it all means for me. What is my genetic inheritance? My mother's sister is the family historian. Aunt Judith had breast cancer seven years ago. This is your family, Judith. This was my grandparents, so mm -hmm. your great-grandparents, and they'd come from Lithuania when they were 18, escaped. So Aaron Yankel, my grandfather, died of a stomach cancer. Right. He was, he was in his 80s. And so of these six people who had cancer, my grandmother had cancer? Your yeah. grandmother had cancer, she had breast cancer, and it was operated on twice. Aviva and Clara had cancer, breast cancer, it was never treated and they didn't die of it. It certainly feels as if there's something going on in the family. <laughs> and when you look at the next generation, you have the same situation. We were 14. Seven of them have or have died of cancer. Benny, Eva, Sonia, Anita, Miriam, they died. So seven, seven out of your 14 cousins that's right. have had yes. cancer? Yes. Can this you? is my wedding. Right. Your Money. grandmother. Yeah. Your mother and me. And we all mum. had breast cancer. We all had breast cancer. Everybody in that photograph had cancer. And you're afraid of having more cancer, do you? I'm fairly pragmatic about it. But Um, <laughs> this actually only hit me sort of when, you're, when Eva died, that it's a possibility. But I'm a very sort of, I tend to be an unemotional person, or at least I hide it, maybe. This news is profoundly disturbing. I had no idea that cancer has riddled so many generations of my family. And my fear is compounded because my dad also died of cancer, as did both his parents. 
I'm going to the genetic counsellors at Guy's Hospital in London. The NHS invests over £100 million in these services every year. It's reassuring to be in their capable hands, but I'm nervous about what they might find. So this is you here with an mm -hmm. arrow. So the circles are the women and the squares are the mm -hmm. men. And we build up the family tree. So this is your father's side of the right. family and this is your mother's side of the family. So if we look at your father's side of the family first, so the, the fact that the ages that they were at and the fact that they had different types of cancer, this is not increasing your risk for cancer for this side. Most cancer is not hereditary. About What's the proportion? The proportion, so only about 5 to 10% of cancers are due to a, a, a genetic susceptibility, so a mistake in a gene that's passed down through the family. If somewhere up here, say to your grandmother had a, a, a mistake or a mutation in one of those genes, it would mean that each of her children would have a 50-50 chance of having inherited that from her. And as they both had breast cancer, it's quite possible that they might have inherited it. And then that would mean that each of their children would have a 50-50 right. chance. So we don't know about your mother because we haven't been able to test her. But it's possible that your aunt Judith might have a genetic susceptibility in one of those genes. Now, if she does have, then that means we'd have to make an assumption that your mother also had it. Right. And then you, you and your sister would both have a 50-50 chance of having inherited that as well. The best person to start by finding out about would be your Aunt Judith because she's had breast cancer. The NHS will take it one stage at a time. They're testing Judith as she's already had cancer and they hope to be able to find our family's faulty gene in her DNA, which would then make it easier to search for it in me. So all I can do is be patient. Or give in to temptation. The internet is awash with companies that may not look in as much detail at my family's cancer genes, but they'll search much wider for many more diseases. 23andMe was founded to empower individuals and develop new ways of accelerating research. We believe that having the means to access one's genetic information is good. We believe that your genetic information should be controlled by you, with a simple saliva sample will help you gain insight into your traits. You know, it is amazing, isn't it, that I can send off a piece of spit to America and they can come back telling me what my genes are. Let your DNA help you plan for the most important things in life. Take charge of your health and wellness today. All for $499. So I pay my money and take my chance. It's amazing they can get my DNA out of my cheek spit. I think I'm done. There is my very own DIY sample. When you tap that consent form, it did say something like, you may learn information that you're unprepared for, which is a bit scary. I'm a little nervous, I suppose. But I sort of think that maybe, um, well, I don't know, I think all information is good probably, so it's good to find out what's going on inside of me. As I go further, I discover there are some conditions you might not want to find out about. Huntington's disease begins with a single fault on a gene on the fourth chromosome, which causes the slow mental and physical destruction of the person. Susan's been bedbound for a decade and is now completely paralyzed. Her daughter Alex has a 50-50 chance of inheriting the disease. I'm visiting their home but I can't film Susan, because she can't communicate her consent. She can't walk, she can't talk, she can't eat, because the Huntingdons has developed so far now that it's affected the swallowing. I'm not being able to do anything. It must just be horrific and a living nightmare. So it didn't affect me when I was younger, but the older I'm getting, and obviously seeing her now, I just think, shit, 
that could be me in 20 years, it could be me in five years, 10 years, I don't know. I have no idea. It may never be me, I might not even have the gene. But it's of that double-edged sword of finding out, you know, if I'm going to end up like, like my mum. Um, and if I've... If I've got the gene, then what does the future hold for me and my daughter? Because if I've got it, then she's got 50-50 chance of getting it. And it kills me. my favourite one. My nan's first wedding, I think she was 19, 20. She's just so beautiful. She still is. Sad. Yeah, it's just weird because I just can't imagine her like that. It's like a little Pac-Man that eats your brain so, you know, different functions stop working. I'm scared of the disease. Not me getting it, my mum getting it and having to lose my mum to a horrible disease. But at least I've known my mum. That's one good thing. The thing about Huntingdon's is that if you've got the gene, you'll inevitably get the disease. So what's the point of a test? That's why I said it's a double-edged sword, because I do... I want to know if I haven't got it, but I don't, I don't want to know that I have got it. And that's the dilemma that I'm in. And it just... I eats away at me every day. What should I do? I should do it because, you know, I owe it to Lucy. You know, because I think if I've got it, then what kind of life is she gonna have having to look after me? Like I've had to look after my mum. I don't want her to look after me. I don't want her to go through what I went through. It's not, it's not fun. It's a huge, like, God. I just love, so, you know, someone to just lift it off my shoulders and go, right, it's okay, you haven't got the gene, it's fine. Pat you on the head, bye. <laughs> Alex decides not to take the test. Her daughter Lucy will face the same dilemma in a few years when she turns 18. I think when I began I thought, oh, it's great, Every, you know, everybody finding everything out. That would be a perfect world, we could all plan our futures. And I guess seeing them, I think, you know, this it's kind of Pandora's box and sometimes it's better to know and sometimes it's better not to know. But for many diseases, a genetic test is far from pointless. With breast cancer, which has so ravaged my family, a test may be the first step towards prevention. I'm on my way to Kent to see Julie, who's recently been told she carries a breast cancer gene. My mum, we knew when she moved downstairs into the lounge that there was something seriously wrong and she couldn't get out of bed. My dad, when she first went into hospital, my dad coming back and talking to my nan and granddad, but standing at the window uh, of my nan's place, um, looking out the back window and saying when they opened her, it, they described it as a garden full of weeds. There was no, no longer any flowers growing. I have her on this pedestal that she was the most perfect person in the, all the world. All I c I've got is happy memories. The only sad memory I've got is her laying in bed asleep the day she actually died. Just sleeping and us laying next to her. Sorry. <sighs> you think after 33 years you could get over something like this but you just don't. The death of her mother, when Julie was a child, was only the first time the disease was to strike her family. My sister, when she got diagnosed, it's just like someone had put a knife through my heart. I really could not believe it. And I think that's when we started to think, 